Hey Shalom, Sister Kate here, and I've got my bodyguard slash driver slash controller security guy. Your own personal Green Beret. That's right. I got, brought my Green Beret along on this trip. Um, and he and I always, when we're driving, get into conversations about various and sundry things. I, I look online for news and I look, um, I get Smithsonian.com articles and Bible Archaeology Review. And we, I've had an interest now in bison for a couple of years because our children lived out in western Kansas. And when I went to visit my daughter, there was actually, I think it was a state park right outside of the city where she lived, and it had a bison herd. And I think they only had a cattle guard. So you drove over this cattle guard, and then they had some fencing, but it certainly wasn't like chain link fence and, you know, super secure, and you had to open a gate or anything. You just drove through, and then you could follow the road and see the bison herd. And so I did a, I did a video on them. I think it's called are you prepared for this and it showed them just walking up and I'm sure it had something to do with the vehicle we were in and the fact that um, the Rangers or whoever helps take care of them probably bring out grain or salt or something occasionally because they knew when the vehicle came something could happen so they, they showed up and ever since then I've thought about one it would be the coolest job ever to be a ranger at a park like that and be able to take care and watch and, and you know study and whatever the bison but then I uh, I got subscribed to a channel called cross timbers bison which is a young man in Oklahoma somewhere who bought some bison and is starting his bison ranch and so he's got several videos and he bought cows at auctions and they had babies and you know, it's just all the stuff. He does a good job giving information about these bison. And so, Pastor and I in our talking in our studies somewhere read that there were bison in the eastern United States, west of the Mississippi. East of the Mississippi. In, east of the Mi Mississippi. All of the bison now are basically west. But they had been there before. And they had been there at times like the 1600s when an Englishman saw bison along the Potomac River in, in uh, Virginia. And other people report bison in Florida in the 1600s and bison in, you know, New York. But when you do a quick, you know, Google search of bison east of the Mississippi now, it says basically they haven't been there for, you know, I forget what they said, at least 200 years or something. The last bison being reported in Pennsylvania was 1800, and Illinois was 1803, and so on. Well, I've also been doing a study, you know, just a basic, let's look at some videos and watch them, about wolves being reintroduced into Yellowstone, and I'm going to have to move that because that's just getting really uncomfortable to hold it that way. Um, and how Yellowstone changed when all the wolves were killed and removed, and how Yellowstone changed again when all the, not all, but wolves were reintroduced from Canadian packs. Because Canada has some parks up in their north that, you know, are very remote and have, you know, uh, wolf packs up there with very little human intervention or, or connection. So they, they transferred some wolves back into Yellowstone. And I forget when that was. I mean, it was pretty recent. Maybe the 80s, maybe the 90s. Um, and the, before the wolves were introduced, the elk had eaten down a bunch of native plants and species. And, and you know, there were flowers and things that they were not being able to find. And once the wolves come back, their prey is mainly elk. And so they... they bring the elk herds back to a manageable number and the plants and the species start coming back. So I, I take that to the bison because the wolves in Canada right now, that's their main prey. They kill bison and eat them. Well, if wolves can be successfully reintroduced into Yellowstone. I think there's red wolves in one of the Carolinas too that they reintroduced. Right? And there's elk in Arkansas. Um, 
why can't somebody reintroduce bison into some of the eastern states? I thought, what an interesting idea, and it's certainly possible. Especially when you look at things like Texas having all sorts of exotic animals there, and there's an elephant refuge in Tennessee. I mean, things these things can be done. And if a young history teacher in Oklahoma can go buy six buffalo and a bull and start raising them and then have offspring, then I think if there's a concerted effort, bison could be reintroduced into the eastern states as well. And Pastor said, oh, there's, you know, there's not enough land. There's not enough room or whatever. And I said, there's definitely state parks and national parks and national forests in every state. I mean, I'm sure every state has at least some of those things. You could start there. But also, you could start on native reservations. And I'm not saying that the U.S. government says to a native reservation, hey, you must take these buffalo. But if I were on a native reservation and I was looking at, you know, we have... 1200 acres or 10,000 acres or you know even 500 acres go to a go to a thing go to an auction buy a bull and a couple of cows and put them out there because here's how you make money if you need to and I'm not saying you have to but it's it can be you know a self-sustaining um, operation operation that can help whoever decides they're going to do it because hunters would pay to do a buffalo hunt and then pastor was telling me about a guy he was traveling with who did that very thing went to a dude ranch somewhere dressed like a cowboy had to use or used a sharps buffalo rifle and shot a buffalo and he swore it was the pinnacle of all the experiences in his life and there are plenty of other hunters i know who would pay big money because imagine getting one with a spear that you made or a bow and arrow right right i mean you could make that experience as big as you want it and again i'm not saying you know just raise the buffalo to have them sold off no of course you manage your buffalo herd you have your you know, your bull and your cows that produce babies for you. And every year, I'm telling you, as someone who raised goats, when you get too many male offspring, you get too many roosters. Look at Bear, Bear Independence video, recent video about, you know, they had to shoot a bunch of roosters and they were eating them. And, We've done that. You know, crock pot and fried rooster and rooster wing and everything else. When you get too many male offspring, like... The China. billy goats. <laughs> Stop. Like the billy goats. One billy goat. If you've been around a billy goat, one is enough. They stink really bad. And they're strong. And they'll do things like knock your fence down if you don't build it right. And, you know, just cause a whole lot of trouble. So if you had ten billy goats, oh my gosh, you would have the stinkiest, hardest. It would be awful. Well, imagine buffalo. Now you have your herd and your 25 cows give birth and half of them are bulls. You have 12 bulls. Why can we not drive the speed limit? I don't know, Pastor, but your extra bulls could be the animals that you keep separate because they're going to separate themselves anyway. They're going to fight and the young bulls are going to go off and form their own herd and blah, blah, blah. Those can be the ones that you allow people to pay to hunt. And imagine hunting a buffalo in a forest in like New York State. I mean, it would be rough and rugged and it would be quite an experience. And just like a cow, it's, you know, 12, 1500, 2000 pounds of meat. And the I think Pastor was saying some people pay how much money to hunt a deer in Texas? Oh, $70,000. $70,000 to get a deer with antlers on it. Big antlers. Big antlers. Come on. Can you imagine if you said, I can guarantee that there are 10 buffalo out there and for $100,000 you can ride out there on a horse and shoot one of them. It would work. It could happen. So, there. There's a free idea for you to make money. There's an idea for anyone who knows anybody in a national forest, national state park job, hunting groups if you've got a state hunting group that you go to say hey you know what do you think about this buffalo idea somebody's gonna make money off of it and I would love to see 
buffalo in the eastern forest. When we take our trips and stuff, I think it would be the coolest thing in the world to drive around and see them there. All right. Bless you. Thanks for listening. Shalom.